in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Amen. 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 To your will, to your words, to your power. Amen. 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 Sing says now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks no money no ministry no influence all that is rubbish the Bible says they looked unto him that's the key he lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent the one on the ground could not have an effect on them he said if it be thou bid me come and Peter set his gaze but the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes you know that song turn your eyes upon Jesus who knows that song his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute. No force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life. Shake away unbelief. Shake away limitations. I may not look like it, but the Spirit of God is doing something. You may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Go into the place of destiny by the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit Hallelujah 
this this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate herod to look for where jesus is satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of jesus i declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you you see for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the bible says there were many lights buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for God and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do over your life before you sit down psalm 45 psalm 45 the lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life words are powerful realities are created through words 45 verse 12 it says and the daughter of tyre shall be there with a gift it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen i taught you something well we're going to teach on something but 
it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then i give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can i give him to buy money the name of what you give that buys money is what the bible calls true riches true riches it is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing the peace the joy the influence are we together there is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing on earth this looks like the highest most valuable thing when you possess this you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish but in the kingdom there are realities that we possess listen carefully and the bible says with it everything whether this whatever it is you can possess is is called the true riches there are seven of this spiritual capital one of them is called light we buy things with light the power light is capital in the spirit the anointing is capital in the spirit words are capital in the spirit in the name of jesus i stretch my hands and i speak over you that in this season i program a climate of spiritual reality above you and i declare may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life may it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life may it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life we're going to sit down shortly let me pray for the grace for speed now listen be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of ahas by this apostolic and prophetic grace i stand in the office of my call i shift you by speed enter a new dimension in the name of jesus speed 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 i prophesied in one day let zion be born i command speed speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift i stand by prophecy and i shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of jesus That's all. In this 
kingdom it is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what i'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you i'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again i'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of god with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of jesus i command that climate to live your life now down shortly lift your hands i want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders i stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit i make contact with your hands may these hands carry strange fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom. Everything these hands come upon, I declare that it is anointed. It will be an instrument of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Just, just leave those under the anointing. Please sit down. Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated oh i was not this i didn't have wealthy parents but there is something that can come upon men and help them you are receiving the help of god god doesn't just help people by wishing he puts something upon your life i've taught you this what is on you is what controls what is around you not what you want not what men say they can talk nonsense from morning till night if you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense What is upon you is what controls what is around you. I repeat, what is upon you? If you desire something around you and it's not there, don't look for it. Look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire. Always like you, Lord, in all the earth. Much less love and beauty endless work nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the cause that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul 
my weakness, you are blessed Lord. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the God that won't run dry Yes, you are the God that won't run dry other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are gathered here and we will always allow you to build, to change to lift any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke, any agreement upon anyone's life, I speak right now. Be set free, be released now. Every other influence on your life that is not of the Christ, bringing you oppression, programming failure to your life, I stretch my hands and I command liberty right now in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. Mm. This is Koinonia. The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you. Because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words, it's not just a lecture. The words you are hearing is spirit and life. So while the word is coming, something, an anointing, one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too. If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the spirit, then every other thing becomes Lord over your life but those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom hallelujah I have a new topic tonight but last week um, I was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time. Let me quickly give us the last one. Please, you can, um, especially if you were here, just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion. We discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness. We discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy that the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny i'm lifting your family said the spirit of god no this is not this is not for everybody i'm speaking to someone now 
I'm lifting your family. It will be like a dream. It will be like a dream. I'm lifting your family. 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 Lifting your family. The Lord is bringing, bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end. That's what the Lord is doing. A confusion of many years coming to end within a week completely within a week the Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying I will visit you again everyone can receive but this is a particular revelation God is saying I am coming to you again the way I came before I am coming again I am coming again it will be in this month this month of June he will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So we said that number four, that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort. Rest and comfort. And then number five, we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment. We gain power not by strolling on the seat. It is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power. In a secret place, you get the anointing for your personal life. And in the secret place, you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season. You can be anointed as a believer, but not anointed to be relevant for a season. Listen very carefully. It is possible that I'm anointed. If you come to me, I can pray for you. But as far as God's agenda within a territory is concerned, it's possible that you are not relevant. There is a special anointing. That one is not the anointing for a believer. That one is not even the anointing for your call and office. It is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season. That's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons. They are still anointed. They still love God. But the anointing to play a key role in God's program is not there. So although they are anointed, you still get blessed. But it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season. The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you. It's going to inspire you. And it's going to provoke you. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. Shabala kato selebe kato selebratiash. Shegete barato sodo balato. Shebete kato 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 balaka to sekete. Manakala baruse anamala kasong British kalabaria. You're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. 
Don't stop, keep praying. Yon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. God most high, Jesus Christ, and your Israel. Please be seated if you can. Hallelujah. sit down, get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Something is lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. Lifting from your life, I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us Amplified. He says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation 
it's not enough to serve God is enough to serve God within the context of a generation are we together now there are mandates that are left for generations every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together I think I was teaching in Lagos during the younger gilded program and I gave them an illustration no matter how anointed I am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how I love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboe because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what I'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation there is a generation where your relevance is allocated to God sends men not just to places he sends men to a generation and if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence then you will live a very useless life and David after he served the will of God there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others are we together every time God was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and I've taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress 
to hide it from the Midianites. Remember, they were being threatened by the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, The Lord is with thee, O mighty man of Pharaoh. And Gideon answered and said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our father told of, saying, Does the Lord not do this and that and that for him? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? It didn't look to Gideon like he was sent. But God said, Have I not sent thee? with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty there is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob Listen very carefully. He's saying the word, O Jacob, there is O God of Jacob. He said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together now? When God tells you to search for him, he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation. Are we together when god wants to teach believers to love he will lift up john and tell them to study his life when god wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up abraham and tells them to study his life in james chapter 5 when god is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called elijah and says study him when god wants to teach people on faith he lifts up peter when God wants to teach men on revelation, he lifts up Paul the apostle. Are we together now? So God is very figurative in his expression. For you to understand this scripture, you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God. Because he said the mandate that was on one man, Jacob, is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude 
of Jacob. Are we together? God appears to Jacob in chapter 28. And until that time, listen carefully, there was no God of Jacob. When God revealed himself, he said, I am the God of Abraham. There was a way I taught Abraham to seek me. There were possibilities about me that no one had known. But my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities. The God of Abraham. Then Isaac, the son, used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac. The God of Abraham was a springboard. The mysteries of God that his father knew. And out of his own dealings with God, God created a name called the God of Isaac. By the time we get to Psalms here, Jacob had done his own too. And God names himself by a man's experience with him. Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham. They were not named after Isaac. They are not called the Abrahamites. They are not called the Isaacites. They are called the Israelites, not even the Jacobites. So powerful was this encounter that God said, the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob. You want to influence a generation? Hmm. God is lifting her, Dr. Alima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God, and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of god and i want you to follow me as i share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Thank you. Just thank Him for life. Thank Him for grace it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed it is of the lord's mercy that we have the eyes to see the things that he has shown us by grace thank you thank you for deliverance thank you for healings thank you for safety thank you for protection thank you for preservation don't be tired let the list go on and on and tell him thank you.
Lord, that I am here in the midst of your people ready to receive, I say thank you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the influence that he has granted you. Thank you for giving you his voice, his spirit, his wisdom, his anointing. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles, but by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you saw them, but I'm here to say I love. Without your word, without your spirit, nothing can be made out of our lives. We stand before your people, connecting with all who are part of this family around the world, we declare that you alone are faithful, you alone are God. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand tongues will not be enough to say thank you. We are not in ministry if lives are not being changed. We are not in ministry if your power is hindered through our lives and from our lives. We are not in ministry if your word is not coming in season. We are not in ministry if your voice is not heard in the midst of us. But Lord, we thank you. We're not in ministry if no one is around to hear what you are declaring to us. You have exalted us. You have honored us. You have blessed us. And we thank you. We thank you. Tonight, I ask that you bless us, challenge us again. We have come to Bethel, the place of bread. We have come to the threshing floor we have come to the place of purification we have come to the place of impartation we have come to the place of hope we have come to the place of transformation we have come to the place of the oil and the wine we have come to the place where you can open our eyes and wash it with eyes out that we may see we have come to the place where the voice of the Lord is not scarce tonight oh God we cry that in a new way you speak to us you challenge us set us on fire once again and oh God beyond the speakings of a man we pray that your voice will echo from the throne and cause us to hear in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus You are my hiding place You always fill my heart With songs of deliverance Whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust Let the weak say that I am strong in the strength of the Lord. We will trust in you. We will trust in you. 
Let the wind say We're going to sing just one more song. Amen, amen, amen. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. To your will, to your word, to your power. from the temporary setbacks, no money, no ministry, no influence, all that is rubbish. The Bible says they looked unto him. That's the key. He lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look. Take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent, the one on the ground could not have an effect on them. He said if it be thou, bid me come. And Peter set his gaze. But the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes. You know that song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Who knows that song? His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely deep. In the light of his glory and grace. I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute. No force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life. Shake away unbelief. Shake away limitations. I may not look like it, but the Spirit of God is doing something. You may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Go into the place of destiny by the anointing, by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no power, no force. The gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me. I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit. Hallelujah. This, this is already a message to someone. Because you see, brothers and sisters, this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus. 
some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate herod to look for where jesus is satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of jesus i declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you you see for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the bible says there were many lights buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for god and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how god lifts people please i want you to be very in intentional about your expectation god is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do over your life before you sit down psalm 45 psalm 45 the lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life words are powerful realities are created through words 45 verse 12 it says and the daughter of tyre shall be there with a gift it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen i taught you something well we're, we're going to teach on something but it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true 
do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then i give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can i give him to buy money the name of what you give that buys money is what the bible calls true riches true riches it is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing the peace the joy the influence are we together there is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing on earth this looks like the highest most valuable thing when you possess this you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish but in the kingdom there are realities that we possess listen carefully and the bible says with it everything whether this whatever it is you can possess is is called the true riches there are seven of this spiritual capital one of them is called light we buy things with light the power light is capital in the spirit the anointing is capital in the spirit words are capital in the spirit in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life may it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life may it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life we're going to sit down shortly let me pray for the grace for speed now listen be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of ahas by this apostolic and prophetic grace i stand in the office of my call i shift you by speed enter a new dimension in the name of jesus speed 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 i prophesied in one day let zion be born i command speed speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift i stand by prophecy and i shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of jesus It is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom 
it is the spiritual climate above you i'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again i'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of god with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of jesus i command that climate to live your life now down shortly lift your hands i want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders i stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit i make contact with your hands may these hands carry strange fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom. Everything these hands come upon, I declare that it is anointed. It will be an instrument of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Just, just leave those under the anointing. Please sit down. Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated oh i was not this i didn't have wealthy parents but there is something that can come upon men and help them you are receiving the help of god god doesn't just help people by wishing he puts something upon your life i've taught you this what is on you is what controls what is around you not what you want not what men say they can talk nonsense from morning till night if you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense what is upon you is what controls what is around you i repeat what is upon you if you desire something around you and it's not there don't look for it look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire always like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty endless work nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the constant will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul My witness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present. 
That is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life I speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the Christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life I stretch my hands and I command liberty right now in the name of Jesus please be seated God bless you mm. this is koinonia The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words it's not just a lecture the words you are hearing is spirit and life so while the word is coming something an anointing one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the spirit, then every other thing becomes Lord over your life. But those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. have a new topic tonight but last week um, I was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um, especially if you were here just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion We discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness we discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy that the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny I'm lifting your family said the Spirit of God no this is not this is not for everybody I'm speaking to someone now I'm lifting your family it will be like a dream it will be like a dream I'm lifting your family I'm lifting your family 
I'm lifting your family. I'm lifting your family. I'm lifting your family. The Lord is bringing, bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end. That's what the Lord is doing. A confusion of many years coming to end within a week. Completely. Within a week. The Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying, I will visit you again. Of course, everyone can receive, but this is a particular revelation. God is saying, I am coming to you again. The way I came before, I am coming again. I am coming again. It will be in this month, this month of June. He will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated so we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment we gain power not by strolling on the seat it is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power in a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life and in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that I'm anointed if you come to me I can pray for you but as far as God's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season that's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons they are still anointed they still love God but the anointing to play a key role in God's program is not there. So although they are anointed, you still get blessed. But it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season. The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you is going to inspire you and is going to provoke you pray in the spirit for one minute just do what i'm asking you to do pray in the spirit just pray in the spirit for one minute just be sensitive to the instructions you're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. Shatakatalakatosa 
Don't stop, keep praying. God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Please be seated if you can. Hallelujah. sit down, get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Something is lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. Lifting from your life, I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us Amplified. It says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation it's not enough to serve God it's enough to serve God within the context of a generation 
Are we together now? There are mandates that are left for generations. Every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish. And hear me, your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation. You can live within a generation and serve God, but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation. It's not enough to serve God. You must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. He said, David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation, not another generation. Everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation. Listen very carefully. If you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger gilded program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed i am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how i love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboe because those are the voices of that generation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? It's not enough to seek relevance. You must seek relevance within the context of a generation. Your voice does not speak to every generation. There is a generation where your relevance is allocated to. God sends men not just to places, he sends men to a generation. And if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence, then you will live a very useless life. And David, after he served the will of God, there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others. Are we together? every time god was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites 
And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, The Lord is with thee, O mighty man of Pharaoh. And Gideon answered and said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our father told of, saying, Does the Lord not do this and that and that for him? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? It didn't look to Gideon like he was sent. But God said, Have I not sent thee? With a message and a mandate to a people. Next verse 15. And he said unto him, listen, listen carefully. He said, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save where? Not the whole world. Israel. You have sent me with a message. But that message is to a people and a context. He said, behold, this is my limitation. My family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty There is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shall smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob Listen very carefully. He's saying the word, O Jacob, there is O God of Jacob. He said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together now? When God tells you to search for him, he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation. Are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation, he lifts up Paul the apostle. Are we together now? So God is very figurative in his expression. For you to understand this scripture, you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God. Because he said the mandate that was on one man, Jacob, is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together 
God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the God of Abraham then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac the God of Abraham was a springboard the mysteries of God that his father knew and out of his own dealings with God God created a name called the God of Isaac by the time we get to Psalms here Jacob had done his own too and God names himself by a man's experience with him Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham they were not named after Isaac they are not called the Abrahamites they are not called the Isaacites they are called the Israelites not even the Jacobites so powerful was this encounter that God said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob You want to influence a generation? Hmm. God is lifting her, Dr. Alima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God, and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of god and i want you to follow me as i share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation that's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know, listen very carefully. I hope you know that when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, from then onwards, the strategic apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this bible when you study history not just bible history you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of god within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in god's program for all seasons no sir 
I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation. I have seen people who are not too anointed but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance. There are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer and um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit, fasting, prayer, with all honor and respect, you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication. It sounds very basic. Yet, in a way that looks as though it's a charm, they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly, unbendingly. They have entered their Sabbath in relevance. And yet again and again, we find anointed men, miracle workers, still scrounging, scrounging at the doorways, the corridors of relevance. Understand what I'm teaching you tonight, and you will enter your Sabbath. There will be no need for competition. There will be no need for unhealthy comparison, because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you. <laughs> You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. One more time. generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said I must still contribute let me gather the materials and God said this man David you you are a man after my own heart and because of that you may not serve in that generation but i will show you look at the messiah and david saw a vision the lord said to my lord sit down that was the coronation of jesus he said david so long he he mastered his generation there was no other voice speaking samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John. After prophet Malachi, it was somewhat a very dark season for the church. No prophecy, no nothing, everything. And all of a sudden, a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden, for the first time, 
they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then john was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when jesus showed up showed up this is what he said that i may decrease i have exhausted myself jesus listen john remained relevant because he announced jesus and he kept upholding jesus the moment he brought jesus down he died too with him although his mandate was over he said who is the next let me uphold him let me give you this secret i want to teach you something powerful if you are in ministry never fight your sons a father that fights his sons loses his honor a son that fights his father loses his life there are punishments allocated for the various offenses every time you see god lifting a man join to lift it if the last move of god always fights the next move of god chances are that when we are in the program of god and a shift begins to happen and god begins to raise other voices the the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what god is doing and they now begin to fight it and you cannot fight what is of god you will go down and so they go down together with it do you know why david's name still remained relevant lord you will not allow me build the temple you said i've shed innocent blood i would have been offended and david's name would have gone down but he said no solomon i will gather the materials for you build the house i will gather the material everybody who partnered with everything god was doing also remained relevant that was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box i'm a prostitute i mean i don't have a name but jesus can i partner with your relevance and jesus said anywhere they talk about me this woman too her story will be remembered there are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of god's program once upon a time they were at the epicenter of god's program but either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end you know why billy graham remained relevant he knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute and all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation and although he's dead he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men same thing with my dear mentor eternally dr miles mono he died but his books brought him back to life he said body you can be laid to rest mind stand up and keep speaking Miles Monroe is still alive. His body is in the grave. But his mind is still in us. We have kept him alive. Because he saw a generation. One of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on. The mystery. Not everybody will be relevant for our generation once upon a time papa ea adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation no matter how prophetic you are your mother would prefer to listen to papa ea adeboye than you i said it in lagos that even if i cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful i am an old woman will look at me and say wow young man i'm impressed let me go to redemption camp quickly i'll see you later because even if they come for this program you were not sent to that generation the voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of god to them 
listen demons know this occultists know this believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of god the four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of god what i am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are establishing this kingdom your generation will know you to be the face of something about god to them every time you talk of prosperity we go to Sam Adeyemi for his generation when you talk about faith and signs and wonders am i not a man of faith but you see our parents will not come to me as that reference i didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of god i'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of god you want to stay relevant it's more than making money you must represent a dimension of god to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that by the time they are established they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension who is the samadhi of our generation who is the bishop Oyedeko of our generation who is the papa Ia deboy of our generation who is the wf kumuyo of our generation who is the apostle babalola of our generation it's not just giving yourself titles i'm apostle nonsense i'm i'm prophet rubbish that's not the issue it's about staying it is your generation that will call you not you the bible said they shall call you the reward for being branded to represent a dimension of god is the name they call Are we together? Yes, Some of us, your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church. You better thank God for sending a generation for you to grow with them. Are we together? I remember years ago when he and I started, there were a lot of young people, students all around and people would just look at it like a children's on the school class and i said oh dear those people that are children are now workers scattered all around you see that if papa Ia deboe says all believers in nigeria fast for three days whether you're a member of redeem or not you are going to fast if your pastor said don't fast you just respect him and pass and say nonsense <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man he has represented the voice of god not just to nigeria but to the world contending for kingdom relevance i will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant i have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God. Men and women of God, especially in this nation, are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance. The scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God. But the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood. And our generation is at the mercy of a bridge, a repairer of the bridge otherwise we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially are we together praise the lord five keys let me not waste your time straight to the point five keys you want to serve your generation please i want you to listen very carefully to become influential enough to establish the purposes of the purposes of god within a generation number one you must know god you must know god you want to serve the purposes of god you must know god not you may know god not you can know god you must have an encounter with god daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God. 
Are we together? It says, such as do wickedly against the covenant, it shall corrupt by flatteries. He said, but the people that do know they are God. They are God. Let me tell you what that means. To know God is not just to know the general God. You must know the God revealed to your generation. If you are in Jacob's generation and you know the God of Abraham alone, you will not be relevant in Jacob's generation. Every generation has a dimension of God revealed to it. Whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context. Are we blessed? But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Listen to me. In this kingdom, it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory. Ask any great man if they are honest enough, they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today, you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit. Whether in business, in ministry, listen carefully, career, whatever it is. If you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results, whether through occultism, whether in the it's secular or whatever, I can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things, a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit. For 30 years, Jesus as the word, the living logos was powerless. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, that partnership turned him into Christos, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. You must know God. You must know God. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24. Please give it to us quickly. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, not an angel, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's the pride of the believer. Your, the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside, because of the food that is on your table, because of your degree that is in your drawer. Are we together? No. All those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to God. Those who will be relevant in these end times. Those who will defy the operation of demons. Those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture. Those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness. They are not just well-meaning people. But those who know their God. Understand it and know it me. Are we blessed? You go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teach him business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right may god deliver us from the limitations 
of an inferior thinking. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Two people come. Happy come. Stand here. Sean, stand here. These are two different people. Listen. Coming from two different cultural contexts. Do you know that the danger of not having an upgraded mindset works twofold? Number one, this lady now, because of her, just an example there, my dear, an inferior mindset that she may be sustaining, listen carefully, it can make this lady to fall into the hands of a bad man because intrinsically, because of her mindset, she has believed I am not good enough. So that low level thinking of not knowing you are wonderfully and fearfully made can make her fall into the hands of a wicked man who will kick her like a football every day. Are we together now? Because she already sustains a mindset that says I am weak. It's a privilege. Dangerous. Then, I wish it's another lady. You go back. Another lady come. Stand here. This other lady because of her awareness of how inferior her mind is, will become aggressive in her approach to life in a way to prove that she's not, she's not just a, a, a low-level lady. Are you seeing that two of them are behaving? It, the same mindset is informing different behaviors. This one now just settles for just anything in life. I don't mean it has to be married, just anything in life. Someone can come and bully her and just collect her phone, collect anything, and you don't have a voice. This other person, you come, don't think I'm not, you know, I'm did that, I'm one of you, I'm fearfully. All those ranting is as a result of an intrinsic, low level esteem that she's having, and she uses aggression to fight it. Both people need deliverance from insensitive aggression. And from giving yourself cheap to life, there is a mindset. Is God speaking to us? I'm dwelling here because if you understand what I'm teaching you, my life changed. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, and I say it with all humility. I never went out of Zaria to be renewed and come back. So wherever you are, it's enough for the transformation to come. All this lie of saying, I must go to Dubai first and America. Exposure is important, don't get me wrong. But he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You can start from where you are and say, look, we came from a family where when rain falls, the, we don't know what part is according to the, the, the heaviness of the rain. That's where it determines which location rain will fall, um, the water will drop in. But from there, you can start thinking, in the name of Jesus, I will be a blessing to nations. In the name of Jesus, I'm upgrading my mind by the Spirit. I have Gary. That's all I have in my wardrobe. But in the name of Jesus, I will feed nations. While you are doing that, we live in a very sarcastic world that will want to intimidate you. You don't have to revolt in weakness. But at the same time, you maintain a healthy perspective constructed by the word of God. That's why it's important to know the word of God. You need to know what God has said about you. So that you will not listen to what God did not say about you. When you know what God has said about you, it doesn't matter what another person says. Is God speaking to us? Which of these two are you? As a result of limiting beliefs. There are many of us who have the call of God upon our lives. But as you are like this, you would dare not say yes to the call. Because you've never seen anyone rise in your background. That the most, the most educated person has SSC in your family. SSC, that's all. And so God says, I'm going to use you. And you are like, ah, it's not for people like us. Oh God, I will gladly be an usher in whatever church it is. And God says, no. According to my predetermined counsel, you are the one I will use. Is God speaking to us? Brothers and sisters, I bring you a word. As limited as you look, you are still the one God is talking about. When God talks about an army that will rise listen very carefully when god talks about men and women who will rise and shake the gates of hell he's not talking about someone somewhere i have always maintained the resolve that anything good i see in the bible i say god is talking about me listen if i didn't have a superior mindset i wouldn't be in ministry now because our world is full of sarcastic people who will bully you psychologically 
they will make it look like what is the basis of doing ministry what is this what is that where will you get money from to hell with the devil i came to preach to someone that in the name that is above all names whatever god has said you will become you must become Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai. In my life, replace the old ideas. Let your kingdom come. Ah, let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Listen, if you will allow God change your belief system. I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can stop where you will go to. They will just keep criticizing while you are rising. Like an inferno of fire. No devil will stop you. Listen, let me teach you something. Be inspired, be challenged, but never intimidated. Don't let any man born of a woman stand and bully you emotionally. Whether because of finances, or because of looks, or because of education, the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every voice you have been listening to that has made you to reject the purposes of God in your life, I silence that voice over your life now. Sit down. Ejimi is here. Ask him when the Lord began to speak to us about what the messages will do around the world. I didn't sit down saying from Zaria to the whole world, Haba, is it people like us? When there are great men like the Oyedepos and the Papa Ie Adeboes, I honor them, I respect them, but not to the detriment of my revelation of God. Come on now, please. Don't love Joshua Selman so much that you look down on yourself and your destiny and your anointing. Love him and give him the honor that is due, but say, I'm coming too. There is an anointing upon my life. No, sir. And sometimes we pastors love it. We love it when people demean themselves to prove that we are great. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There is no good leader that will not want to see his people rise up and even be greater than him. We started that message and I announced to them, I said the Lord said we should not sell any one of the tapes. That I told him, I said I saw the message on the wings of the spirit going everywhere. Ejimi was the one who designed the logo of ENI. Ask him, he would tell you. Ejimi almost cried designing that logo. I couldn't design, but I told him, you must design what I saw in the spirit. He would do this. I said, no, sir. This is not what I saw. Adjust this. He was so tired. I said, this logo you are seeing is going to the nations. Design it well. Ask him. I saw the vision. I said, your hand, you must find a way of seeing what God showed me. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Is it because I came from a background where we don't have light? Is it because our house was made with mud house? My mind is not mud mind. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, I have proven with my life that you can break any barrier. It's true. God has used me as a statement to prove to you that this race, ba, my brother, if God holds your hand, let the people keep talking. You just move. You just move and watch with shock and wonder. Who has lied to you that just because you read this or you have this, you cannot be great in life? 
Who told you you cannot contend for a position of influence? You go to bed in the night and see a massive crusade. You get up and say, no, no, it's Reinhard Bonkers crusade. God says, no, no, it's you. And while he's talking, he says, ah, God, when, when so, so, so man of God has not even done that. What is your business with the man of God's call? Ah, even so come, 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 Lord Jesus. That which you have revealed, let it come. When Koinonia was about to start, I was in a retreat and I saw the visions and I was sharing it with them. One of the things that I love, you hear me talk a lot about Ejimi, one of the things that I love about him is because he's always a victim of my revelations. When God shows me like this, I call him and just keep pounding it on him. And sometimes I honestly see that he, he wants to be honorable to say, Apostle, look, I don't doubt you, I'm a man of faith too, but ah, will it happen? You see why it's dangerous to be close to me? Because when you are listening, you can't say it won't happen. Because automatically you have become an antichrist. And any antichrist in my life must go. You are here right now. You trek from where you were here. But God has given you the name of your foundation. And God already told you that you will be spending as much as a billion dollar per year. And you are saying, God, please, uh, I, I, I give that vision to a Jimmy. And God says, why do you believe to me? Brothers and sisters, I bring before you an arrogant society that does not know the power of God. They don't know that God is the lifter of men. So when God shows you things, you go to them for accreditation. And they use their limitation to say, God has never moved this way. No. No. There is no way I cannot go to. No. There is, there is, there is, there is, and, and, and I'm not just saying this just because God has brought some measure of results. It's been like that. Those who know me from day one, it's not boasting. I'm not talking of vain arrogance. That's not what I'm talking about. A settled confidence. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, persuaded that one day I will not beg for bread. That one day the nations will gather together. Right from those days when we were sitting on the ground, I used to describe the international headquarters of this ministry that I saw about 47 flags of nations. I used to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it and hear sarcastic people speak. You, God said you will marry a pastor. God doesn't have any woman to give his son. And he will come and give a village girl like you. And God says, that's right. It's village as I want. So that the excellency of power may be of God and not of men. Can you pray in tongues just for one minute? And say, Lord... I, I reject any belief system that is not consistent with your ways and your word. Yes, you are able to take me high. Yes, you are able to lead me to the place of destiny. Praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Abada katola bakata sene makata yalabas. Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you find your destiny through the word, then the first limitation, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. The first thing to change in your life is not your shoe. The first thing to change in your life is not your, uh, what they call this thing, your hair. The first thing to change in your life is not your toothpaste. The first thing to change in your life is not your room. The first thing to change, second only to your encounter with the Spirit, is your mind. Remain with the dirty clothes 
and let your mind keep changing and see whether your mind will not buy new clothes and change that body we we spend time trying to live a fake life buying every other thing and starving our minds There are pastors who start ministry. They know nothing about church growth. No anointing, no nothing. They buy the most expensive suits, expensive watches, expensive chair and room, and they preach to themselves. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. That's a song you will be singing when your mind causes your life to change. Let me tell you this, quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just ate turkey. God bless you with your turkey. My turkey is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand a transformed mind. I tell you this, your mind is a gate. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cards and getting angry and say, Jimmy, is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, you mean life can be this cheap? I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know he took me there. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny. I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Mm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine. Huh? And then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. 
There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorified God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable. Write it down. Key number three, extreme value. Those who will be representatives of the purposes of God for their generation, please write it down, are not only men and women who will know God, they are not only men and women who will be transformed. Your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded. When you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. It is your difference that decides your rewards. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are seeking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men seek for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with myrrh. They will never come empty-handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them, what can you do? And they say, I can do this. My next question is, how good are you? I say, no, but God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. Say, no problem, here and there. No. Oh, you are, you, are, you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce. When it is truly seen, it is sought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine that he just came here and a woman calls him to give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. Hallelujah. The reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses. When your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you, people will ignore even what is obvious to seek you. You go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes. But the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. 
your dignity notwithstanding if you can make the meat go home it's as simple as that and the person making it is not in a hurry he's not in a hurry if you have a, i didn't force you you can and you stand you complain but remain you insult but remain this will be my last time but remain it's your last time until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back when your enemies join to seek you you are valuable they search around for alternatives and don't find and say look we have to just make do with what is available when god wants to honor a man he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere at least not in that fashion a few years ago a man was praying for me a great man of god i went to see him and saw into his life and then he looked at me and just laid his hands on on my head and say oh god create a problem around his region that only him can solve i said what kind of prayer is this just slap my head and say <laughs> if that prayer is answered for your business you will be afraid that's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry they say this mama must be using a charm one of our mothers here gave a testimony recently when i when she she was telling me about the testimony i will not mention the details but it's a breakthrough that god gave her that it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if god gives you you have reached december <laughs> even though you are in april you have reached december you can start laughing see thou a man any man see thou a man diligent in his business there is a promise that she shall stand before the great he shall not stand before mean men. Let me tell you why you are standing before mean men. It's not because there are powers fighting you alone. There may be an element of that. But let me tell you, your, your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you. Whether as a man of God, I've challenged you, I've challenged all the people here, the leaders here, and you're a man of God here, I'm challenging you. Don't just stop at the level of sharing and say, oh, the power of God is moving, it's moving. Then one lady now starts rolling around. That, 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 you won't go far that way. You get to a church where it's the ushers that are producing that kind of result. They can't invite you. You must stay with him. Let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. Remember my teaching on true riches. That, that you have true riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Angote now. What do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility. You will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I have gone to. You say, may God bless you. They just say, amen. Because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? Did she not come with gifts that money could buy? I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life that will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. 
Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996 till tomorrow. He didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something. Let's hear and you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when you can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think it was yesterday night while I was about to sleep. And I was so blessed. I said, Kai, this man is anointed. I truly see why people seek for him. Value. You see... If I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are, you see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one naira, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira and you are there saying to apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand that. They would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has walked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will rise will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people say, ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is, is such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you pick, Abba, for 18 years I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study. Sit down and learn. The average sermon as a man of God takes serious time. I preach an average of two to three sermons every week. You think it just drops from heaven just because I told... God gave me the topic. He didn't teach me what to say. What gives you topic and gives you wisdom? You go and sit down and research and learn. Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? 
Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, is a blind guy. I didn't even know he was blind. Went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing and I said, what is this? We were on our way to Kano. We were just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Value. But someone whose eyes, are, whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for God to do this. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent here, let me advise you. Especially for your male, your, your sons. Start training them to be responsible early in life. Sometimes this dashing, excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy. Pain is a language that can teach people. Money is not the only thing you should give people. You can give them advice. They don't like advice. They don't like counseling. But they like something they can hold and exchange immediately. Be valuable. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself. That whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will, be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with Hausa people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. Entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. Amen. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your note. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level I've not gone to bed and at the level you are, you are sleeping, it's a sign that you are far from influence. I have food to eat. I can eat whatever I want to eat. But then you are still awake. Shakatos kabarakatosh. New dimensions, oh God. New levels, oh God. I come back from a meeting. I came back from police academy. They gave me this their police, uh, this uh, police thing. Two of it. That thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. You can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you. And then you wonder, why don't people listen to me again? They say, because you stop being relevant. You see, let me tell you this. As we are sitting now, if someone starts shouting under the anointing, you won't be impressed because you have already seen that standard in me. There will be an appetite in you for what more. When that happens in another meeting, you'll be surprised. But what will bless, it will only bless visitors. But you who is in Koinonia here now, once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around, you don't turn and say, hey, what is happening? No. When you have hit a standard, that standard, people get used to it and that's all. You must strive for something more. 
That's why when they say holy, 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 when they lift their face, they see another dimension of God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. If you are who was, you are in trouble. If you are who is, you will soon be in trouble. There must also be something to come. That was, is, and is to come dimension must work in your life. If I only know he who was, businessman who was, apostle who was, what are you doing now relative to what God is doing? And what are you doing tomorrow? Will our little children need you? Or will you be so irrelevant? They say, I don't know why you people like this man. I'm, I'm telling you things that many of you will not hear easily. Value. I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruit of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power. You will stand and wonder and say, Lord, is this what you can do? They will come and find you with a big bed, but you are crying on the ground. And they say, sir, you should be lying down on this bed. He say, no, don't worry. I'm lying down on the ground because what God has done for me. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Listen. This is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere. And all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. If a professor is still reading, writing articles, doing researches, and you just come out, a, a degree right now is almost like, I, I told you about a place that I went to, that the receptionist had two MSCs abroad. Receptionist. Gone are the days where you brag and say, look, I have a degree in A, I have another degree in B. And someone will come who is 18 years and say, I have four degrees. And you stand there feeling foolish. But there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place, that can take away shame. Brothers and sisters, shame and reproach can leave a man. When you stay with God that he put something upon your life, financial shame can leave your life sociological shame can leave your life you never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine let your mind add to your beauty let your value add to your beauty oh you are too short you are too tall you are too fat you are too slim value can make you fit for everything a door that will not open because they will say you are too tall value will reduce you to enter a door that will say you are too short value will make you taller to enter you have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrows. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the pain. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. You have taken all my tears. You have taken all lamentation. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. Listen, God wants.
wants to make this song someone's reality that you turn and say lord look at how you took away shame from my family lord look at the embarrassment i'm a man of god i am called into ministry but it's like i am not called but look what you have put upon my life today i have become beulah and hefzibah the desire of nations look what you have done with my family my mother that was nothing my brother that was nothing they kept saying can anything good come out of my family but lord look what you have done you have taken me from a donkey Finally. Valley. Sit down. Let me give you four four things that you should cry for. There are seven of them, but I'll give you four. <laughs> they are called the true riches of the kingdom. I want to teach you what buys money, what buys influence. Influence is a product. It is bought with something. I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one, the capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination, revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. Mm. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying, 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 this is the way. People prosper in life because the Lord is their shepherd. And if the sheep cannot hear the voice, you will go where the lion is. The forest is a place that is open for every other animal, not just the sheep. It's the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness. Otherwise, the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up. The ability to hear the voice of God correctly is value. Let me give you the fourth one. I have a series. That's why I'm not giving you all of it. There's a series, Two Riches. Before the end of the year, we'll teach it. So that you will stop chasing money. You will chase what buys money. I taught you last week. Please come, sir. Give me this water. Come here, Jimmy. Look at this. If this is... I, I have, let, let me bring out some money. This is a product called a bottle of water. Is that true? I don't know how much they sell this, but... You just hold it. Now, if a Jimmy wants this, he needs to have something that can buy it. So if I give you money, you have bought this product. But when you want this, what buys it? If this is the product you want, what buys it? A job? <laughs> Business? No. True riches is the name of the money that buys money. Are we together? It's true. Whoever possesses light must possess this. Whoever possesses understand. He said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Business or job are simply physical platforms to give the two riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded. That's all they are. So if all you have 
and all you are looking for is this you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever that's what is happening to many of us now anywhere money is is where you are running to the money itself is running somewhere find out where it is running to don't just follow money follow where money is going this money that is running away is going somewhere where is it going it's going to those who possess true riches either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place when god wants to prosper men he doesn't give them money it's an insult if god gives you money why will he god give you money god gives you true riches and compels a territory to identify with that and you will have this and not know what to do with it and find out that this is the least of your concerns he will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm why do people want to hear you it's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket value are we together now thank you you drop it in the offering basket or something praise the lord very very important the last of them is the anointing let me tell you this the highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing the highest Higher than all others that have called. The anointing is the highest spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth. In heaven, the anointing is not the highest. Because we see in the throne room, all the people in the throne room, we don't hear the mention of anointing. So there are things higher than the anointing in heaven. But on earth, the anointing, the valued cherub and the rest, all of them they don't live in the throne room they visit the presence of god with the anointing that means there is something those 24 elders have there is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing we will find out but for now as given to us he says the yoke it shall come to pass in that day listen carefully that the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing when god wants to use men on earth he gives them the highest value the anointing he can give them in the secret place and they come out in the open and life starts following them where did this shepherd boy david smelling sheep but with the anointing don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing he has true riches it may not look like it that's why those who seek god people will say don't see god don't see god balance what they mean balance is leave god don't leave god oh you leave the anointing you suffer in this life takes the anointing the rich are oppressed too the poor are oppressed money cannot buy that money can't buy the salvation of your soul money can buy panadol but he cannot cast away demons. So whoever has that ability, ah, you have taken all my shame, you have taken all my sorrow, you have taken all my pain, you have taken all limitations, you have made them yours. Highs praise to the king koinonia listen to me do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here you are not just receiving information there is a transfer like you do internet transfer something is coming on your life you see as you keep receiving that a time will come you will come out my brother my sister regardless of all other limitations in your life you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you and you look at their chariots full of gold and silver and they say let it be a privilege someone's prayer point of 10 years your your savings plan of 20 years the anointing brings it in one day let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time and I say this with due respect and honor. Over 70% of those who partner with this ministry are not here. I don't know them. Are we together? Our ministry is full of, a lot of young people. 
and God is helping you all, you are rising. But many of us are not yet there. It will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry. When the finance department brings me the bills and I look at it, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what? This is what one department is spending per month? But by the finger of God, when he gives you two riches, it's like a charm. Look at Elisha. Naman, what are you doing in front of my house? How about Elisha, come out, respect me. He said, who is leprous? Me or you? Go and bath seven times. He said, respect it while he's talking that jargon. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible said, those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flatteries. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Yes, Value. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Yahweh. I've given you one, you must know God. Two, be transformed. Three, be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. You want to contend for kingdom influence, you must master relationships. Not just have relationships, you must master relationships. Everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence in business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people, two, even anything. Can, can your systems walk together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. 
there is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two work together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships. And that's why we never rise. We are born again. We are anointed. But the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest. Because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw the wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because he's my friend and I love him. Because she's my friend and I love her. They're wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina and they give me their very best. They have honored me so much and I reciprocate it. It's a relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them and they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you. And you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this year, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Shola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me now and said, Apostle, come to our region now. We want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me and eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely and you care for them and you show them love, you will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? 
If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please immediately take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, how can I Ashiria? No relationships. Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And he says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians they are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come sometimes, they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related, let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. Who hates you doesn't matter. But who likes you in this kingdom? I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. They are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can be bound, favor will maneuver away in flow. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same. The one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all, in your world, there is no stratification based on value and honor. No. Jesus had three. He had 12. He had 72. He had 5,000. He had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. Let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying, you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, you just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God in my life I will never be offended in. 
If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedeko's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting, Pastor Correde. He said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. How to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry, I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. You never connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect. Just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. <laughs> you know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effort to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you would never do it again? You shouted at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> you shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lady. I will never shout. In fact, from... No, no, no. I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's, it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in it. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. There are people connected to me. I know I'll continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well and create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy sewing machine today. You will buy bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? 
practice tolerance. Number six, be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is a key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me, oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave half for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table because the level of intimacy you require is not the general well-meaning you want me to remember you while away what are you bringing and then you say okay i know that you usually get thirsty so i found where to fetch water for you you see that i know that demons attack you frequently so i've said i pray one hour for you every day that's a contribution listen let me advise especially couples whether you are about to marry or you are married insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice children you too don't just say you gave birth to me you have to where you get to a certain age you should be a contributor even if it's not finances you can clean the chair you can weed the grass there's nobody under my roof who will not do anything no you can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein He spelled the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? The person, yes, so I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way to make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love practice genuine love let me tell you this one of the most painful thing in a relationship is to discover for someone to discover come promise if i love promise and promise eventually finds out that all the while i really didn't love him i just had somewhere to go and i found out that he can help me get there so i was nice to him within the period of getting there is one of the ways great relationships die i've seen this happen with pastors i've seen this happen with business people ah hey, jimmy i love you morning he's calling a jimmy night he's calling a jimmy next week he's calling a jimmy hey jimmy will i see you next week and then a door just opens and there's no a jimmy again because it was never about a jimmy it was about me through you is your friendship genuine or are you just looking for something through people is god speaking to us now yes do i love you so much i know how much i love you by how much i can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you there are ladies who started relationships with men 
just because they are looking for daily bread and the day the guy just said kai this bread that i sell something thieves just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this you call again and it's, it's number busy because you want to prosper through a man what of brothers that is just food they are looking for because you don't cook you found out that a sister's hand has been blessed and all of a sudden, how are you it's two days i've not seen you abba and uh, she said oh, in fact i was even thinking of bringing so said, now you are talking and then the day she tells you that look um sorry the money to cook is not there you say look I'm, I'm i'm pressing into god i'm busy i don't have time for things of the world again our world is such a selfish place listen if you ever want to rise through influence there must be a track record of your genuine love for people i love pastor peter genuinely i love his wife genuinely i love all my pastor friends genuinely just like many of them love me genuinely i know you love me genuinely some of you many of you but not all of you can be all of you i'll be fooling myself but i know that at least you love me genuinely you can be sure that i love you genuinely i know jesus loves me genuinely is that true at least it's, i know satan doesn't love me but i know jesus loves me i know my little children here love me they love me more than you by far let me tell you your relationship life is intact when children love you i've told you this if children run away from you it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating because children are too innocent to run away from you i love jesus not just because the bible tells me so i love him because he has proven it again and again and he's poured that same love i love you with all my heart do you look at all the relationships in your life today which one are you using and which one is real hello we are going to pray i want you to look at all the relationships in your life today which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end not an end in itself this guy is a prayer warrior let me just use him to scatter this because on my own i won't reach that gate i've already seen the giant that stands so let me partner with him let me use his voice to open that gate that's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down it's so painful for people to claim to love you and when you are down there's nobody there for you there are many of our people who are getting married here and there there are people who say they love them and never bring five naira I promise you are getting married take 10 naira <laughs> may the lord honor you you know this god that we talk about you don't love when you love you give you don't give money alone you give any and everything hallelujah it's true one of my greatest prayers is for god to help me to continue to love people it's one of the keys i have found to the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life you can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love the bible says you are an empty symbol you must genuinely have love not just for god but for me i love god genuinely ask him he will tell you i don't love god because i'm looking for tea i don't love god because i'm looking for bread i don't relate with him just because i want him to meet my needs if i were doing that then there are many things i will not maybe i will just be praying once a week on friday lord bless koinonia thank you Thank you because there's already rice on my table for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Bless Koinonia. But I love him. I still go back to his presence and say, Lord, I've come again. You are my desire. You are my pursuit. You are my everything. Many of you, it's your relationship with God that went sour, that made everything in your life to go sour. The first relationship to be restored is your relationship with God then your relationship with those that god has ever used to bless you if god used them once he can use them again do all you can to preserve the relationship do all you can there are times i send many people text messages just like you don't get replies from me sometimes 
I don't get replies from them. But I'm not offended because I know they are busy. The most important thing is that I play my own part to make sure the relationships are there. Maintaining relationship is costly. Maintaining relationship with great men is costlier. Maintaining a relationship with God is the costliest of them all. Because it can cost you your life. You can even die. You will lose a lot of things relating with God. But you will gain a lot of things. You want to relate with people and not lose anything. You are selfish. You must lose something to stay. What are you willing to lose? You must lose your time to gain something. You must lose your time with God to gain the anointing. You must lose your time. There are times that you will have to lose your ego to sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you. There are times you will need to lose your appetite. You are hungry, but the person talking to you has not finished. You must sit down there and sit down for as long as he's talking. Relationships. God has used relationships to lift me today. I can't tell you, you know, sometimes I don't even want to share. I like being myself, but I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching. I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence. Relationships. Somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you. Somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you. Even to Jesus, somebody told you about Jesus. Even if he's an angel, he came as Angelus, a messenger, to connect you. Let's finish it. Give me five minutes. Let's not allow it go to part three. Number five. And we end for tonight. You want to contend for kingdom relevance. You must be unusually anointed. The last key, you must be unusually anointed. If you are just anointed, you will not do much. You must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing one result today no result tomorrow one this today no every time they invite me to go for ministrations i am very happy because i know what the anointing is going to do to the people it's going to change their lives those of you who are first timers who have come here now i'm happy because while you are sitting something is happening to you you will get up and go back and wonder it will look like a dream the way god will turn your life around nothing just happens koinonia i will drum this into your life it is what is on you that controls what is around you it first starts from what is in you then it comes to what is upon you then it brings things around you if there is nothing upon you creation will be so harsh to you you will feel like dying is that true unusual anointing the difference between any two people is not the god they believe in the difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I am doing and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is nine more 1,000s. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them 
is to be unusually anointed when you are unusually anointed then you are a blessing you are not a blessing when you are not anointed when i say anointing i don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting ah, 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 ah. That, that's not anointing results the ability to manipulate realities over people create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around the anointing i say to one go and he goeth i say to another come and he comes immediately after the grace there will be several people lining up here to see me and many of them have issues whether i'm able to solve those problems is a different thing how many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situations it's not like you are not anointed but you need to operate at a higher level a higher level a higher level that must be your cry a higher level thank god for where he has brought you but my brother my sister at this level of anointing the nations will not demand your grace at this level is your local environment that will demand your grace at this level of the anointing you need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you as it is now all men cannot seek for you but all men seek for you we are going to pray i want you to be relevant i have taught you the keys number one you must know god number two you must contend for transformation number three you must be extremely valuable number four you must master relationships even beginning from here there are people you need in life and destiny swallow your pride bury your ego and maintain the requisite relationships it will take so that when you are great and when they are great even if you are not there they will pick you through their greatness number five be unusually anointed the highest of the two riches when it comes upon your life then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow you will find out that all men will seek for you they will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life at that point you will never beg for bread again at that point your voice cannot be silenced again there is no cause and no yoke that will ever silence your voice are you ready to pray tonight we are going to take five minutes the prayer points are all that i mentioned i'm just going to allow you with god for the next five minutes exactly i want you to cry your heart in prayer and say lord i want you to lift me i want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom lord i do not know you lord i am not transformed my limitation has pegged my growth to a point that i'm not able to do much lord i confess that i am not valuable enough i have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life who have made me feel i'm more valuable than i really am lord i have ignored relationships i'm a man of god but i've ignored valuable relationships i've let my pride get in the way i've let offense get in the way and then lord i'm anointed but i'm not unusually anointed lift your voice and pray please pray outside pray those following online pray you activate these five things you have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever doesn't matter what background you come from lord i now see why poverty seems to trace and trail my life lord i now see why no one is willing to listen to me i now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, jump over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
I decree and declare, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I declare the seed of greatness for the kingdom is within me and I declare that church you have given me will not be small, that business you have given me, that anointing, that grace, that career, multiply my influence, thou shalt increase my greatness. And comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness. And comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness. And comfort me on every side. Would you mind me giving you one last one? I want you to mention all the five points one by one. Especially for the areas where you know you are lacking. Some of you, you don't have a problem with knowing God, but your mind, your mind, there's something in your mind that is authorizing darkness to prevail over your life. Some of us, we are not exceptionally valuable. For some of us, we have ignored relationships. Open your mouth and mention them one by one. Grace, oh God. Grace from heaven. Grace to press into the things of God. Grace to know you more. Grace to know you more. In prayer, in fasting. In the study of the word, in corporate fellowship, please make sure you are praying. Love your destiny enough to pray. Love your children enough to pray. Love your generation enough to pray. Lord, I cry for transformation. Something about my background. Something about my culture, something about my sociological perspectives is affecting my life, affecting my growth, affecting my influence. I cry to you, O oh God of heaven, alter my mind, alter my thinking, alter my paradigm, alter my perspectives, change my perceptions. Lord, I receive grace to be so valuable. To be needed and useful, valuable in ministry, valuable in business, valuable in my career, valuable in my profession, valuable as a man of God, valuable as a woman of God. I obtain that grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace for strategic relationships sent to my life, men and women that are gates to my next level. Grant me the fortitude. To maintain those relationships. Grant me the wisdom. To maintain those relationships. Lastly cry for the anointing. Father send more fire. Greater fire. Fresh fire. New dimensions of the anointing. New dimensions of the anointing. Expand my spiritual horizon. Let your hand rest upon me. In a way that the nations will know. That your hand is upon my life. Let your hand rest upon Koinonia. Greater results, greater signs, greater wonders, greater dimensions of the operation of the Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Our time is. This is how people become relevant from absolutely nothing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The grace that it takes to know God, to be and stay transformed, to be exceptionally valuable, to master relationships, and to knock on the gate of heaven until new dimensions come to you. I pray that that grace be released upon your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you that where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that is fighting your influence, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that those powers live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I spoke to you about two riches. Whichever you do not have in your life, I command a supply of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as a corporate people, we decree and declare that you are increasing our greatness. And you are comforting us on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I call you not just a person but a voice. I declare from today be a voice. In your career become a voice. In ministry become a voice. In healing become a voice. In the prophetic become a voice. In business become a voice. In the academics become a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no one will be able to silence your voice. What has not been done by your loved ones, by your father, your mother, I empower you by influence to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall.